In case you're new to the channel, this is Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome. Now, bottleneck calculators. I've receiving some, some comments across the months or across the years of bottleneck calculators. Well, I saw my build on bottleneck calculation, this or that and so on and so on. What I'm telling people is basically that bottleneck calculators are useless. And they are useless for a reason, because there are too many variables for them to be accurate. You teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> People think bottleneck calculation is easy to do, but it isn't. It is easy to see if you have a bottleneck or not, or what's causing the bottleneck, if you have a keen eye and you know how to watch things, if you are experienced on that matter, but calculating it percentage-wise is really hard. And once again, because there are too many variables. First of all, you need to account your CPU, you need to account your GPU, you need to account your RAM frequency, you need to account your RAM timings because they matter as well in terms of CPU bottleneck, because when we, we usually talk about a CPU bottleneck, we talk about CPU slash RAM bottleneck, so the RAM frequency and RAM timings matter a lot as well. Then we have to consider the game you're playing because the game engine matters as well, depending on the CPU and so on. The game you're playing, the resolution you're playing, the settings you're using in that specific game, and if you're using ray tracing or not. Because after all, what matters in a specific game for a specific combo is the FPS output. That's all that matters. And in case you're not following, it is actually pretty easy. Imagine that you have a CPU slash RAM combo that can deliver 100 FPS in a certain game. Those same 100 FPS at 1080p medium settings. If you decrease the settings from medium to low, it would deliver the same 100 or maybe like 1 or 2% more FPS because there are some settings that are indeed CPU related. So maybe going from 100 to 105, while it should give you way more FPS. And if it doesn't give you more FPS, it means that once again, you are CPU slash RAM bottleneck because the GPU can do more at low settings, but your CPU and RAM can't push more FPS. Basically, they can do the work that the GPU can do. Hence the bottleneck. The GPU sends a lot of data, but the CPU and RAM can only send a bit of data. That's why we call it bottleneck. So in order to have an accurate bottleneck calculator, you would need all these, all these variables tested one by one in each scenario. And on top of that, you would need to have the best gaming processor in the world tested to be kind of uh, the base mark, let's say the base mark of the 100% performance. And even, and even the best CPU for gaming in the world would still bottleneck in some scenarios. So it would still not be 100% accurate, even in that scenario. So yeah, these are the first ones that I, that I found when searching for bottleneck calculator on Google. I didn't find many of them and these ones were the, the ones appearing first, which is the bottleneck calculator by PC Builds and the bottleneck calculator from CPU Agent. And by the way, let's start with the one from PC Builds. But before, let me just give you a short word from our sponsor. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. So let's start with the calculators from PC Builds. We have, we have the site, website, we have home page, components, so on, and then we have the calculators. With a bottleneck calculator, games bottleneck calculator, which is basically a calculator just for a specific game, which is a good thing, actually. Then we have the FPS calculator and the PSU calculator. Being the PSU calculator, the only one that I believe works properly and works in real-world scenarios. The other ones, not really. But for more technicity, let's go to the games bottleneck calculator so we can select a game in specific. So remember when I talked about several and several variables that we have when calculating a bottleneck? Well, this website only asks us our processor, our graphics card, the video game and the screen resolution. So no settings, no RAM capacity, no RAM frequency, no RAM timings, nothing. And I know for sure that with this data, they can't do anything properly. But well, let's start. Let's start, for example, with the build I'm currently using. 7700X, and 7900XTX. Let's, yeah, let's try for example Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p. Proceed to calculation. <laughs> 
And yeah, I've seen this before, but 29.2%. I can tell you right away that in Cyberpunk 2077, it is absolutely impossible that a 7700X has 29% bottleneck with a 7900XTX. For you to see that I'm not lying, I'm just gonna open the, the uploads folder that I have with my GPU base tests. These are the GPUs that I tested so far, as you can see. Um, let's open the 7900XTX folder. And let's go, for example, to Cyberpunk 2077. I even retested, as you can see. I have the pre 2.1 results, then I have the 2.1 results, or two, yeah, 2.1 results are these ones. But let's open, for example, yeah, let's open this one. And there, and there's a, uh, there's another variable, by the way, which is which is the part where you're testing the game, because there are some parts that have lots of NPCs, others not really. So in some parts, some parts of the game might be more CPU bottleneck than others. So that's another variable to to account in. But anyway, they said we have 30% bottleneck. I have the exact same build, exactly the same once again, 7700X as you can see and 7900XTX. And look at the usage, the GPU usage. 100%, 100%, and it is basically locked at 100%. And the maximum, if you are going to look at the power draw, okay, the minimum we went down to is 91% here. 91%. And then immediately, once again, 100%. Still the same, 98% and 350 watts. Now, this card can achieve a maximum of, let's say, 400 watts and usually that happens when we're playing at higher resolutions of course but even here 350 watts the reference version 2800 megahertz even a bit more and the cpu is at is at 90 watts and we're recording so we're still losing fps due to recording and still as you can see nowhere near the 30 percent bottleneck i mean not even 10 percent bottleneck let alone 30 percent bottleneck and i'm using high settings if I was using ultra settings, which push the GPU a bit more, so it means ultra settings are heavier, means that the GPU can't achieve as higher FPS as it was achieving with high settings, with these ones, meaning that the bottleneck would be lower because the CPU wouldn't need to produce as much FPS because the GPU wouldn't be able to produce as much FPS as well. So once again, the 29% is basically bollocks. There's no way in hell that the bottleneck is 29% as I showed you before. And that's that's a fact. That's a fact. Even on the more populated areas, there's no way we have 30% bottleneck with this same combo. But once again, they didn't ask for frequencies, for capacities of RAM, nothing. If we go, for example, for my video that I did some months ago with the 7800 XT versus 7900 XT versus 7900 XTX, I tested 11 games and I tested way more. And I can tell you right away that the 7900XTX is at least, even, in even at 1080p where we have some CPU bottlenecks with the 7700X, okay? Definitely not 30%. We do have some, but not 30%. It is at least 30% faster, at least. So think with me. If we were to put a, thir a GPU 30% slower with the same CPU, the 7700X, if we have a 30% bottleneck with the 7900XTX, it means that if I put a GPU that is 30% slower, the bottleneck should be close to zero. Because if it is 30% slower, it means that it will produce 30% less FPS. And if it will produce 30% less FPS, the CPU will be able to achieve the maximum FPS for that GPU. So let's find out. Let's go to the calculation. And let's test the 7800 XT. And no, with the 7800XT, we still have 17% bottleneck according to this website, which is once again false. And I can show you right away because I have the 7800XT test as well. Let's go to Cyberpunk 2077, look at the power draw and look at the, the percentage. 100% all the time. Means that we do have not a single bottleneck, a single percentage of bottleneck. It's always 99%, 100% where it should be. In order for you to not have a bottleneck, the GPU usually needs to be in between 98 and 100% and close, not always, always at the maximum power draw because the resolution matters a bit as well in terms of architecture and so on, but really close to the maximum power draw. And look, 98, 99, 100% 
percentage all the time. So there are there is no bottleneck here whatsoever. But according to them, we still have 17%, which is obviously false. Now we can try just to finalize this website. We can try, for example, another CPU. From my own testing and from testings that you can see online, the 7600X is from, in terms of gaming solely, not productivity, just gaming, it is, it is from 5 to 10% slower usually. 5 to 10%, so 10% at most. And we had 17% bottleneck, 17% bottleneck with the 7800XT. As soon as we go to the 7600, we have 22%. So basically, here, they are actually accurate here, in this specific scenario. So they are accurate telling us that the difference of bottleneck in between the 7700X and 7600X is 5%, around 5%. I believe that's the case and that can be the case. But once again, there's no way that the 7600X is a 22.5% bottleneck to the 7800XT. Just don't happen. It will be in some games, but not in Cyberpunk 2077. And that's, that's for sure. Let's see, for example, if they have... If they have Modern Warfare 2, maybe? Modern Warfare 2, maybe they do. 62%! 62%! This means that the 7600X wouldn't be even able to deliver half of the FPS the 7800XT would. And this is absolutely insane! This makes no... what? What the hell is wrong with this website? Oh, it's the it's the older one, that's why. It's the the game engine. Okay, okay, my bad. I would like to see the newer one. Let me see if they have Assassin's Creed Mirage or something like that. Yeah, basically they have no no new games whatsoever. They just have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Okay, I believe I can work with that. 22% bottleneck once again. No, th this is just this is just not happening. Old Valhalla left. Now, you can see that the GPU usage is at 100%. And although the power usage is low, I can tell you that the power usage is low because the GPU is, al is already hitting the maximum that it can get. On the reference version, it is usually 2950 megahertz or 3000 megahertz at most. So it is already hitting the max and that's why the power draw is so low because once again, uh, it won't go over this frequency so the power draw won't increase as well but as you can see in terms of usage it is basically at 100 percent all the time and i played this game like 80 or 90 hours and it was completely fine with this combo so there is once again no way we have 22 percent bottleneck and the funny thing that i heard across the years is that some people comment on my channel saying things like according to the bottleneck calculator my gpu is a 40 percent bottleneck to my cpu you're wrong that's kind of the ideal gaming scenario where your GPU is the bottleneck and not the opposite. If your GPU is at 100%, things will usually, or at least 98, 99, things will usually go smooth. If your CPU is at 100%, pff, things will stutter a lot. If you, are, if you are out of RAM capacity, you'll have stutters. If your RAM frequency is too low, your FPS will be too low and sometimes you'll stutter. So the ideal case scenario is for your GPU to be the bottleneck. Now let's try a funny thing. Let's try, for example, the 7800X 3D with a really low end, um, well, we can do this, the 2060, 0% bottleneck. Now let's try with the 7800XT once again. <laughs> Guys, we know that the 7800XT is considerably faster considerably faster than the 7700X and even in that scenario they show a an 80% an 18% bottleneck of the 7800X 3D with the 7800XT I thought the 7700X had lower results <laughs> So according to these guys the 76 the 7700X in this scenario is actually faster than the 7800X 3D, and we know for sure that it isn't. So, 7700XT is a 17% bottleneck, but the 7800X 3D is an 18% bottleneck, showing that the 7800X 3D is slower than the, 70, than the 7700X shows us immediately that this bottleneck calculator is useless and worthless.
But let's try this one, the CPU agent bottleneck. We have compare CPUs, compare PC builds, and the bottleneck calculator. So let's see the bottleneck calculator. We have more variables to, to insert. In, while the previous one didn't have the RAM capacity or the RAM frequency, now we have, and we have the settings as well, which once again is an important piece of information. So let's select the CPU once again, 7700X, bam, 7900XTX, RAM capacity 32 gigabytes, RAM speed 6000 DDR5, okay, 1080p, let's put 1080p high settings, nice. I'm, I'm liking this one, much better than the previous one, it seems. And, okay, it is comparing it to the 4900K. So I guess this is more a CPU comparison than a bottleneck calculation. But anyway, more CPU comparison, more CPU comparison, and then we have the bottleneck analysis, telling us that the 7700X with the 7900XT, according to them, it says once again, 8 gigabytes DDR5, but on the benchmarks, it says 32 gigabytes. And it says that we have a 10% bottleneck with these both. And this is actually a fair result, I believe. I believe that across several benchmarks in several games, I believe that the average would be more or less on par with what they're showing here. A 9% average bottleneck with the 7700X and the 7900XTX. I believe that's the case. I don't really know why, but they're using 32 gigabytes of 3800 MHz RAM and that doesn't really make much sense. PUBG the same, so the 14900K is faster, of course. Okay, and now we have the streaming analysis with a 34% bottleneck. This one, I don't believe it is correct because it is hard to believe that a CPU with many, many cores and the 7700X while streaming is actually, is actually the, has actually the same amount of bottleneck percentage than a CPU with way less cores. Yeah, I believe they don't have the 7800X3D the here. Let's try the 5800X3D then. Yeah, they have it here with 3600 MHz RAM, 32 gigabytes as well, 1080p high settings. And remember, from the, the video that I made before that you can see passing right now on the screen, you can see that the 5800X3D and the 7700X are more or less on par in terms of gaming. Although the 7700X has higher frequency and has more Wayla L2 cache, the, the X3D from the previous generation has way more L3 cache, so it helps in game-based scenarios. As for the bottleneck calculation, well, let's see. We have 10%, which seems once again okay. Since they are more or less on par, we have 9%, let's say 9% or close to 10% with the 7700X, and we have 10% bottleneck with the 5800X 3D. Let's try, for example, the 7700X once again with the 7800XT, like we did before. Why don't they have these cards? Okay, let's try the 7900XT. Oh, I need to select the RAM frequency once again. 6000, bam. Yeah, and now it's, it stops making sense. Because with the 7900XTX, that is considerably faster than the 7900XT. As you can see, even, even in these scenarios, even at 1080p, where there is a CPU bottleneck in some scenarios, even there, we have, let's say, 15% difference. 15%. So if we had 10% bottleneck with the 7700X, with the 7900XTX, we should have close to 0% with the 7900XT. And the results that we have here are basically the same. Once again, this makes no sense. Let's try another combo. The 5600X. A previous generation CPU, which is considerably slower than the 7700X. Once again, considerably slower. Let's do the benchmark. I can tell you right away, and if you go search online, it is at least 20 to 25% slower in CPU bound scenarios, and in some cases, even more than that. So a CPU that is supposed to be 20 per, at least 20% slower than the previous one, somehow has only 6% more bottleneck with the same card, and that makes absolutely no sense. I mean, even if we look at the benchmarks themselves, if you look, for example, at the, the, the GTA 5 benchmark that they did, it is, I can tell you right away that it is impossible, impossible that the 5600X is delivering 252 FPS while the 14900K is only delivering 287. It is 
absolutely impossible. I tested the 12600K before and the 12600K was already slightly faster than the 5600X across the board, even with the DDR4 3600MHz. Uh, so there's no way, no way the 4900K is only slightly faster because this is slightly faster only than the 5600X. There's no way, there should be a way, way bigger difference even with the 7900XT. So these benchmarks are flawed. Flawed to say the least. This is just insane. Let's just try another one. Let's try an even slower CPU. Let's try, for example, the, the Ryzen 5 3600. My bad. Ryzen 5 3600, even slower. And let's try with 3200 MHz. 1080p high, 32 gigabytes once again. And it seems that it takes a Ryzen 5 3600 at 1080p with a 7900 XT to be a 23.6% bottleneck, which obviously is false because the bottleneck will be much higher, especially in nowadays games. The bottleneck will be much higher. The Ryzen 5 3600 won't be even even able to deliver 80% in some in some cases. So I I find it hard to believe that the bottleneck with 3200 MHz RAM is only 23%. No, that's that's way more than this way more than this, for sure. I'm not even blinking, I know for sure that it is way more than this. And the funny thing is, if I go here and change the GPU once again, remember, the 7900XTX, in the worst scenario, is 15% faster than the 7900XT. 15%. But as soon as we go to the bottleneck analysis, we get exactly the same average bottleneck, showing us how useless the bottleneck calculator is once again because if the GPU is faster, it means that the bottleneck will be higher as well. And even here, we're changing GPUs and yeah, it is the same. But let's go even further. Let's search for the RTX 4090, for example. RTX 4090, great, they have it. Now remember, a 4090 is considerably faster than the 7900XTX. Although the AMD GPUs have way lower driver overhead, CPU driver overhead, so they tend to perform better with lower end CPUs. With the 4090 and with the 7900 XTX, with a slower CPU, let's say the Ryzen 5 3600, the, the AMD GPU, even though it is slower than the 4090, will give you higher FPS numbers. And that's once again because AMD drivers have lower CPU overhead, leading the, the slower CPUs to perform slightly better than on the NVIDIA side. That puts a lot more work on the CPU. That's why the driver overhead is bigger. But let's see the bottleneck calculation. And once again, even with the 4090, the average bottleneck is exactly the same. These bottleneck calculators have to be one of the most worthless and use, useless, useless, completely useless tools that I've seen across the time. They are misleading people a lot. And once again, now, remember this. With the 12600K, we have only 10% bottleneck. 10%. The same that we had with the 7700X. So they are implying that the 12600K is as fast as the 7700X. Yeah, they're basically implying that it is 0.1% faster than the 12600K, which is bollocks. Once again, I'm not telling you that these benchmarks are fake, but, but if they aren't, they're definitely not well done. The way they are comparing things is not well done and it is misleading to say the least. If they're not fake, they are misleading and these results should not be, be accounted in any part of the world in any scenario because they are just not true to reality this would no, this would not apply in any scenario there's no well there's a way that that the 70 7700x is around 10 percent uh, 10 percent bottleneck of course with the 7900xtx but it would be let's say at least 15 or 20 percent bottleneck with the 4090 because once again of the cpu overhead and so on so on so on once again do not trust bottleneck calculators they will give you um, a wrong impression of what your build should be like or should look like or should perform like so they will give you a wrong impression overall and you'll feel maybe like your build is this or that or maybe like they said before maybe you'll think that the bottleneck is bigger than it is 
or maybe you'll think that the bottleneck is lower than it is because as you saw, we have no accurate results whatsoever in both websites. If we test, oh, sorry about that. Even if we test different scenarios on the same website, the same website will have completely messed up mathematics because <laughs> the, their percentages just won't fit. They won't show you results. This one show you, shows you results, but at the same time, it tells you that you'll have the same bottleneck with the 1490 that you have with the 7900 XTX. And they somehow are testing the 4900K with DDR4 only. And they are telling us that it is just a bit faster, for example, than we tested before with the 5600X and makes no sense. They're flawed to the bone. Do not use them. Go to proper benchmark websites like Tech Power Up, Tech Spot, watch some very good video reviews of uh, of those of those cards, of those CPUs, hardware unboxed, Gamers Nexus. We have some others like Optimum Tech, also has some other some really cool benchmarks. We have Daniel Owen, which also has some interesting GPU benchmarks. My channel, of course, Ancient Gameplays, where you can actually see lots of GPU benchmarks as well, even the ones that most people don't know. And now we will start having. CPU benchmarks as well. We also have RAM benchmarks, capacity wise, frequency wise, timings wise. We have everything in the video section. We, me, and when I say we, my brother and I, because my brother now uh, actually helps helps me with the channel as well. But that's basically that. If you go to my video section, you you, you have lots lots of comparisons. Once again, RAM side, CPU side that will come now. Once again, GPU side and several other things. Thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, um, because I wanted to really dismystify, if that's really a word, dismystify the, um, we say it in English, in Portuguese I mean. I really wanted to show new users or newcomers, let's say to the PC community, that bottleneck calculators aren't the way to go. They might seem easier, but they won't show you the reality that you want to know. Thank you very much once again and see you in the next video guys. Cheers. Bye.